All right, so let's do variables. And the first thing you need to know about variables, uh, variables store value, value. Variable stores a value. And if we look up variable programming definition, uh, right at the beginning, in computer programming, a variable is a storage location paired with an associated symbolic name, sometimes known as an identifier, which contains some known or unknown quantity of information re referred to as a value. And so my mine was a variable stores a value. A variable, uh, a variable stores a va value. A variable has an identifier. And so here's an example. X equals 42, right? And I'm going to put a little 1 in there like that, and you'll learn what that is in a second. But there's an example. This would be the identifier. This is the value. And you'll learn what that colon is there in a second. And so how do we use variables in Go? That's just it. We do x colon equals 42. And now, you notice that's all the way on the left. I could do format, and that's going to format my code. And if I have this imports checked, it will either add or remove my import. So if I had nothing here, right, I'm going to, whoops, format. And now my import disappeared. But when I do font print line and then add in hello, or I'm just going to print X, print X format. I want too many curly braces. It tells me expected declaration found curly brace line seven, line seven. That shouldn't be there. Every opening curly brace should have a closing curly brace. Now I format it. Fine. It brought in my imports because imports is checked. I wanted to send this code to somebody, I could copy it, and I could bring it in here, and I could do this, and now that code is forever available right there, right? So I could share things with people. This one is an old one. I don't need that. I don't need that. And now if I run this, it prints out 42, right? So I created a variable and uh, assigned a value to it, and that's the shorthand operator, okay? And so that's the way that you're always going to declare variables in Go when you're between curly braces, when you're in a block of code. So block of code, let me just put that down here. Block of code, uh, also known as a code block, also known as aka code block, code block, not black, Are, uh, area between curly braces also known as braces, right? So we'll just call them braces sometimes. And so an example is like right, it'd be you know the area between this. Right? So that'd be a code block. And so you could use you can use the short I always want to call it the shorthand operator, but let's be specific with our language. There's a language for talking about the language, right? Go has its own language. So you're going to learn about that as you learn Go. So we have a language for talking. about. If I said, whoa, the waves are huge, I'm going to go get my gun. How many people would be like, what? <laughs> right? But there's a language for every subculture, and surfing a gun is a board you use for surfing big waves. So every subculture has its own language. Programming is a subculture. It has its own language. And Go is a subculture within the programming culture. And it has its own language. And so uh, it's important to be specific when talking and use the right terms. Um, and so idiomatic code. Idiomatic code is uh, idiomatic code is code that conforms to Go's programming standards, right? And we have programming standards that when we work on teams, we're all playing the same game and speaking the same language. Imagine if you're on a soccer field with 12 people and all 12 of them are speaking different languages. How many people are even on the soccer field? Is it 12? <laughs> 11. So I don't know soccer. But, you know, if they were all speaking a different language, it'd be like, you know, what? I don't speak Italian, right? So we all try to get the same language. So when we're on teams, you know, an idiomatic code is... 
so uh, let's be specific. Uh, Golang spec. Let's be specific in our language, and it's the short short declaration uh, in multivariable short declaration. That's the only one. Uh, let me just see if there's like an operators and delimiters. Uh, it's just been a while since I've looked at this. Let me see if it's in effective Go, which is like another. And these are all available from golang.org documents. You have the effective Go, which I just looked up. You have the FAQ, which we were looking at earlier right here. And then you also have the language spec. And these are like the three main places you go to get your stuff and learn officially. And I know somebody who is a Java developer for 20 years. No. He was, a C, C++, he was C++ for 20 years. He came to Go, and for six months, the language spec didn't make sense to him. Right? So it is uh, like, uh, like uh, it does take a little time. But you just keep coming back to it and try to make as much sense from it as you can. So I'm just going to look here in short declaration. The short declaration form. So that's what they're calling it. The colon equals short declaration form. So short declaration operator. That's what I'm going to call it. Short declaration operator for declaring a variable variable in a code block. Okay. And when you look around, and, you, and this is it right there. So example. x colon equals 42. So that's just an example. So there aren't, you don't add semicolons like in JavaScript. You want to do this. Hey, I'm at the end of a line. I'm at the end of a line, right? Like why Go wants to be lean and clean and readable. So you just say x colon equals 42, print x. And that scope is now right here. It's just in this block right there. I can't do x. I can't do x colon equals 43 up here, or let's make it y. I can't do that up there. Short declaration operator does not work outside of a code block. It's going to throw an error. Non-declaration statement outside function body. So if you need to declare something outside of a function, right? I want it to be available. The scope here is where is that variable available? That variable is available here. x is available in this code block right here. Right? If I had other functions, x would not be available. It's only in this code block. If I wanted a variable available in another code block, I would do var y equals 43. And then y would be available anywhere inside the package because that would be what's known as the scope of that variable is package scope. So anywhere in the package, y is available. And now I run it, and that, that would work. So we have two ways of declaring uh, variables, this way and this way. I could also specify the type, var y int, if I wanted, 43. Or I could just say var y int, and it gets a zero value, right? Which means it's set to its default value. And the language spec, language spec, I should just keep these open, but maybe it's good for you to see me just continually going here, talks about zero value right there. And uh, the zero value... Uh, false for bools, zero for integers, zero, zero for floats, empty string for strings, and nil for all this stuff, right? So that's, uh, that's variable declaration. So I have an assignment for you. I want you to declare two variables and then print their sum. So I'm going to say declare and assign. And we'll talk about the difference between declare, assign, and initialize right now, I guess. No, when, when we're done, when we come back. And then print their sum. So there's their assignment. And the next one will be declare your name and uh, print your name. And do that. Use the short declaration operator. And I'll put these in the notes.